island of Cuba, there are a number of deep holes, caves flooded with water where light never penetrates. This dark world is home to species of blind fish. Blind because their eyes have atrophied. In this opaque atmosphere, they are no longer necessary. Some of the survivors of the planet Earth have adapted to places like this, where, because of the lack of light, colors serve no purpose. Such beings are almost always white or transparent. However, the vast majority of animal species depend on the sun as a source of energy through green plants. Outside marginal worlds like this one, living beings are flooded with light, and where there is light, Colors and designs develop as a means of communication with the surrounding world. Living beings on this planet are dressed to suit the occasion. An entire code of colors is used to send messages to others a sophisticated system of communication which everyone tries to employ to their advantage. Strident messages of love that may be intercepted by dangerous eyes. Clan markings, bright colors inviting you to eat them, or warning you to steer clear. The same color can mean entirely different things, depending on the bearer. A red flower attracts pollinators, but no one in his right mind would eat a red caterpillar or a scarlet frog. Their color screams, beware, poison. Some seek to frighten, while others compete to be the most beautiful. Humans, too, adopt color as a means of communication. Since the beginning of time, we have used them to express our emotions and feelings. In all cultures, there are colors of love, of joy, and of death. Even in the most advanced societies, colors form an important part of our identity, both as individuals and as a group. We are going to listen to the language of light. On the beaches of mud and sand that the receding sea leaves behind along the coast of Java in Indonesia lives an animal whose life revolves around color, the fiddler crab. When the tide goes out, they take over the beach. It is time for the males to compete for attention, and this they do by displaying the colors of their enormous claws. Against the brown background, the signal clearly stands out. It serves to attract the females who do not have this oversized appendage. And not just any female, only those of their own species. Here on the mud flats, like rival baseball teams, each species of fiddler crab has claws of a different color. This is the white team. Clearly identified in this way, they will not waste time fighting with males of other species. So the whites compete against the whites, the reds against the reds. There are constant threats and the winner takes his prize. While all around the gladiators fight for their colors, another more discreet animal has its own way of sending messages to other members of its species. The mudhopper is a fish that is quite at home out of the sea, a diver in reverse, carrying its own water reserves alongside its gills. For them, it would be very dangerous to bear bright colors all the time, because they would be seen by their predators, so they use the signal which can be switched on and off to send short messages. This system works well and is fairly widespread among very different and distant animals, such as these anony lizards in the West Indies. The problem is some predators have very good eyesight when it comes to intercepting the visual signals of the anonies.
The secret is to broadcast just enough to get the message across. One word too much could prove fatal. Often the important thing is not so much the colors themselves, but the patterns they form. For animals that see in black and white, such as the giraffes or the zebras, the important thing is the design and the distribution of stripes and patches on their bodies. However, for birds like these vulturine guinea fowl, both things, design and color, combine to convey a wide range of messages to others of their species. Without a doubt, the most important of all is their identity. I'm one of you because I'm the same color as you. I'm a vulturine guinea fowl. In this way, gregarious animals are identified with each other, and others recognize them as belonging to the same clan. But when everyone wears the same uniform, there might sometimes be problems when it comes to telling individuals apart. For example, how does a zebra calf know which of the adults is its mother? Simple. Shortly after birth, it memorizes its mother's pattern of stripes, which is unique. Thanks to this, among other factors, her young can recognize her, despite the constantly moving confusion of barcodes. Here in the north of Kenya, two species of zebra often mix. Gravies with thin stripes and bruchelles with broader stripes. For them, the differences are as great as if the other species were buffaloes. They simply ignore each other. For the inhabitants of New Guinea, war and tribal clashes form part of their existence, and so painting yourself in the right colors can be a matter of life or death. On this large island, around 1,000 different languages are spoken, and the members of each clan use different war paints in their frequent disputes. Within each group, the dominant colors are similar and act like the uniforms of soldiers in battle. Any confusion and you could be speared down by someone from your own side. Though the government of the island tries to get them to resolve their disputes in the courts, almost 5,000 Papuans continue to die every year in these tribal wars. In any case, a clan's body markings form part of its cultural identity because they're also used in the dances they perform to commemorate the great battles of the past. For a Papuan child, the colors of the enemy tribes represent terror and death, while those of its own clan embody peace in the home. Even if these clashes come to an end someday, the clan colors will live on in the stories they represent through dance. The Papuans, like so many other peoples on Earth, adopted the language of colors from observing nature, above all from the birds. And it is no coincidence that the island of New Guinea is home to one of the largest, decorated in bright colors. The common cassowary weighs 60 kilos, and those fleshy blue and red lobes convey a different message. They say, I'm sexually active. In this case, the males and the females are similar, but among birds, it is more usual for the males to be the ones sporting more spectacular sexual colors. 
Just one example of this can be seen every year on the Galapagos Islands. The male frigates are arriving from the ocean and choosing their breeding grounds. They are related to the pelicans, but use their pouch for a different purpose. They inflate it to an enormous size, displaying their colors to the females who fly over the area to choose the potential mate with the largest, reddest pouch. All over the planet, male birds can be seen showing off in this exaggerated manner. In Tanzania, the Cori bustards, normally inscrutable and discreet, strut around with their feathers puffed up so they shine in the equatorial sun, with the same sexual purpose as the frigates in the Galapagos. These exhibitions represent a risk for the males who can be easily spotted by predators, but success in reproduction is much more important. After all, an individual without descendants is a genetic dead end. For some, all they have to do is to show off their new shoes. The blue-footed booby's name says it all. Whichever part of the body they're on, the important thing is to move the colors around, to show the females you are in good health, to strengthen bonds between the couple, or simply to stimulate development of the internal sexual organs. The mere sight of sexual color sets off a chain reaction and activates production of the hormones necessary for the reproductive process. The enormous amount of energy expended by the males in showing themselves off more and better demonstrates just how important colors are in the lives of those animals that can distinguish them. These Indian peacocks, for example, are obliged to literally mesmerize the females if they want to copulate. The peahens, plain and ugly, sit back, enjoy the show and make their choice. In the case of the flamingos, their bright pink wings and their dances are signals which help all the adults of the colony to synchronize breeding. All the chicks must grow in time to be able to fly off before the water is evaporated by the heat. A matter of life or death. And as might be expected, human beings who have excellent sight to appreciate colors, the legacy of our past as tree-dwelling fruit gatherers, have introduced color into our culture, stealing the feathers from the birds and imitating their dances. This is a ceremony called Tanimet. It is held in certain Indonesian tribes to introduce and pair up unmarried individuals of one village with those of another. Naturally, color plays a central role, this time a cultural development rather than a genetic one, as in the case of the birds. Identical methods with the same aim in mind. Oh, 
The master of ceremonies or matchmaker will witness the forming of couples which must be accepted by both parties. As all the inhabitants of a village are related, the men have to find wives in other villages in order to avoid endogamy. They look at each other and take each other's hands, mingling and gradually defining their preferences. The ceremony can last days or even weeks. But among the survivors of the planet Earth, chromatic language also serves other functions, and no better place to see this than in the paradise of chameleons, Madagascar. For some, the best shade is background color, precisely in order not to be seen by predators. If you're small and not poisonous, your best bet is to be seen as little as possible. In these cases, the verdict of the predator is final. Those that are good at hiding survive and have children, while those that make mistakes are disqualified and die. The result is there for everyone to see. On the other side of the world, in the jungles of Venezuela, these maqueritare women are collecting the fruit of the tree they call anoto. They extract the seeds from which they make a red dye, which is very important for them. They are going to paint themselves, ready to hunt. The maqueritare have always surprised anthropologists with their vast culture based on a symbolic universe. They ritualize everything, and in particular their relations with animals and plants. Before setting out to kill an animal, they must, through the shaman, establish contact with that animal spirit and seek its consent. Through ritual paintings, hunters believe they will attract certain animals and scare off others. In their mythical universe, hunting is a kind of seduction in which the men pair up with animal females by mutual agreement. In these cases, as in others, the shaman is a spiritual hybrid, somewhere between them and the animals, and establishes the bridges necessary for the union. The cultural tradition of the Amerindian peoples of the Amazon basin is based on paintings on the bodies of the tribe members. The animal spirits only permit predation if a relationship of affinity has been established. Up to now, we have seen how the language of colors conveys messages and helps in different situations where communication is necessary. But wherever there is communication, there are also lies and deceit. 
On occasions, giving the wrong impression can save your life. That is a lesson the Asaro, a Papuan tribe, learned some time in the distant past. As always in Papua, they commemorate that event by reproducing it every year so that the oral tradition is not lost. According to the legend, the Asaro village was constantly being attacked by the ferocious warriors of a neighboring clan. They were living in permanent dread of the final decisive attack when an old man had a dream in which he saw horrific grey beings. Then they had the idea of disguising themselves with mud and covering their heads with masks of diabolic appearance. Dressed like this, they approached the enemy village and scared them off forever. There are many similar stories in the history of mankind, and the decisive factor in the outcome is always the same, our fear of the unknown. The fact is, having or pretending to have a ferocious appearance can serve to dissuade many enemies, and often avoids the need to fight in order to demonstrate your strength. These techniques should not be underestimated as they have been and continue to be used by armies and police forces throughout the world. Some animals not only look dangerous, they really are dangerous. You'd need to be very hungry to try to kill a male warthog. Others, however, use techniques similar to those of the asado. This is one of them. It is a king skink, in reality a rather inoffensive, vulnerable Australian lizard. But when it feels threatened, it reacts by taking on a ferocious appearance. The trick usually works. While for any animals, colors serve to reaffirm their group identity, to find a mate, to hunt, to hide, or to defend themselves, for human beings, it has also been associated with religious contact with the other world. The ritual masks of the Ivory Coast are not decorative elements or folklore. They are doors which open into the spiritual world and can only be used by initiated members of the secret societies of each clan. Scientists have recently discovered the psychological influences of colors on people. It is known, for example, that red accelerates the heartbeat and causes discharges of adrenaline. Advertising uses these hidden messages of colors to provoke certain reactions in consumers. The ancient African masks were right after all. For centuries, they have known how to use the power of colors. But for those blind Cuban fish, all of this means nothing at all. Their unseeing eyes are unable to interpret the language of colors. Mm -hmm. 